Oh, looks good. Hell, not bad. Today, we'll meet the world's richest dog. Little man, T, up, oh, back. And we'll show you how not to be a magician. Yep. Stop. Hold the train. There we go. Oh, something good. We'll learn about cooking on an outside grill. Snip, 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 snip. Oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, quick splat. There we go. And we'll make short work of Diz. Soon get to it's out of control. And now here he is, the man who's quicker than the eye, the guy who put the hocus in the pocus, Dave Coulier. Well, as you can tell, today's show is about magic. Abracadabra. Pretty good, huh? Well, here's another trick you're really gonna enjoy. Ready? Presto! Pretty darn impressive. Oh, come on, cut it out. Come on, quit it. Cut it out. All right. Here's something really stupid that you're really going to enjoy. Nothing up my sleeve. Shazam! Wow, Dave, how did you do that? Oh, it was nothing. Did you like that? It was excellent. Oh, well, it's just a bunch of camera tricks. I, I really don't know any magic at all. But I wish I did, though, you know? Well, if you'd really like to learn about magic, and I don't mean the basketball player, why don't you introduce our first story? That's a good idea, Diz. You know, if you want to learn about magic, why don't you just follow these simple rules? Wow, how did she do that? magic. You too can amaze your friends, influence your enemies, baffle your teachers, and make a little extra cash performing at birthday parties. All you need to do is follow these easy steps. Step one, pick a name. You must choose a suitably awe-inspiring name. You'll never get anywhere if you don't impress your audience right from the start. Win them over and you've got it made. Step two, the magic wand. You must have a magic wand. You do have a magic wand, don't you? Well, that will do. It's important to gain the faith of your audience. So let's start with an easy trick. Project an air of supreme confidence. With a trick this easy, there's no way you can botch it up. You're in complete control. Step three. Wrap it in the hat. Now proceed to a more difficult illusion. The old bunny rabbit in a hat trick is always a crowd pleaser. Nothing up your sleeve. And voila! But be careful. Once you've reached deep into the realm of magic, there's no telling what you'll find or how you'll get out. Four, cut a girl in half. You must take the utmost care in selecting someone from the audience. Pick someone perfectly ordinary. You know, nothing suspicious, not too eager. Ah, that's more like it. You wouldn't want people to think that you have anything prearranged. Now you're ready for the big one. Anyone can cut a girl in half, but you're going to cut your assistant into four separate pieces. This is pretty dangerous stuff, so the excitement should be really mounting. If all is going according to plan, you'll have whipped your audience into a veritable frenzy. But there's always the possibility of losing your audience. So just in case, pick up the pace. I said, pick up the pace. And finally, no matter what happens, you can never underestimate the importance of a big flourish at the end. So don't forget to smile. A toothy grin makes up for a lot. 
especially when you can't rely on your assistant to pull his soul together. Well, if I were a magician, I'd make this show disappear. <laughs> hey, where'd everybody go? I hear you're getting into magic. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Why don't we saw Ha Ha in half? <laughs> Wait, Hearn, I've got a better trick. You'd like to be a magician, too, wouldn't you? Well, sure, um, yeah, I guess so. Okay, Hearn, nothing up my sleeve. You don't have any sleeves, Ha Ha. You really want this trick, don't you, Hearn? Yeah, let me have it. What did he say? He said, give it to me. Yeah, let me have it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not magic. Sure it is. That's a vanishing cream pie. <laughs> Daddy, Dave, if you really want to learn about magic, our first guest is waiting backstage, and he's even a real magician. Well, here he is, all the way from Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, Presto the Pretty Amazing. Hi. Hello, Hello. Presto. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. I'd like to start off by doing a card trick. Oh, great. All right. Just think of a card, all right? OK, I'm thinking of a card. OK. Got it. <laughs> all right. Is this it? Nope, that's not my card. That's not it. Um, well, what was your card? My card was the Seven of Spades. Seven of Spades. Um, oh, come on. Give him a chance, well, everybody. Well, this is as close as I could come, but I have another trick here that I made up that I'd like to do for you. It's called the floating helicopter. I just have to get my special magic cloth oh. back here. All right, like the floating helicopter. OK, the old floating, see the copter? Okay. OK. Covering it up, covering it up. And now the copter will begin. Look Ooh. at it float. It's floating away up into the. Hey, come on, you guys. Give him a chance. He worked hard on these tricks. It's come right. on, you guys. That was a good it's trick. pretty good. This next one is really a, a really good trick that I made up. It's What's this called? It's called the face ringer trick, OK? All right. Put that on. OK. Watch this. Hey, look at that, huh? Now my face is complete. Oh, come on. You guys, give him a chance. These are good tricks. He worked hard on these. Hey, come on. Uh, Presto, I, I think maybe you need a little more practice. You're right, Dave. I'm just a beginner. I, I can't even handle hecklers yet. Well, I got this magic uh, book here from the magic shop the other day. Maybe we could read it and learn a few things together. Well, you better start reading. The crowd is getting pretty wild. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, we have a hurry up that we have to do right away. I, I got a letter here for a hurry up. Somewhere, it's, um... Could this be it, perchance? Hey, that's a great trick. How'd you do that? Uh, I, I read it in uh, page two of that book, uh, How to Make Envelopes Appear in Letters. Hey, would you hurry up? <laughs> I got a letter here from Sally and Cindy Carbuncle of Savannah, Georgia, and they say that they like to play basketball, but they hate to do the dishes. Sally and Cindy, this hurry up is for you. kitchen is so clean, you can eat off the floor. Hey, you, got any salt and pepper? 
sawing the lady in half. It's got to be in here somewhere. Wait, this is it, but it's uh, up, upside down. Oh, uh, good. Uh, are you sure you guys got this thing figured out? Oh, there's really no trick to it at all, Diz. <laughs> Yikes, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, uh, this saw's too small, Diz. Well, this too? <gasps> it's the biggest saw we've got. All right, great, Waldo. All right, Presto, why don't you pick an end? OK, uh, I'll take the top half. Not Diz the saw. All right. Are you guys trying to give me a split personality? Uh, don't worry, Diz. There's really nothing to it. <laughs> Ow! Oh! 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 I see stars! I see stars! OK, that about wow. does it. You okay? Dave, this is great. I think we, we did it. Yeah, we're talking magic now, Presto. Uh, yeah, this is pretty amazing, guys. But but now can you put me back to, 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 to together again? Um, we haven't gotten that far in the book yet, Diz. It's oh, got to be here somewhere. I'll, I'll get some glue. I'll get some glue. OK, Waldo. Uh, while Waldo gets the glue and we try and figure this out, why don't you watch this? Me, Pull yourself together, me. Diz. <laughs> Hey, Dave, are you sure you know what you're doing? I knew this was gonna happen. Anyone got any rubber cement? <laughs> oh. <laughs> It says, and the backbone is connected to the hip bone, and the hip bone is connected to the jive bone. Hey, look what Diz gave me. She said she won't be needing these anymore. That's it. What's it? It, sa it says here on page 32 that what we need is a beautiful magician's assistant. Look into my eyes. You are going to become a beautiful magician's helper. <gasps> get into real show business. Stay <laughs> away from these guys, Angela. Dave and Presto don't even know what they're doing. If I had known that, I never would have helped them out. Oh, I, I don't know, Dave. Maybe I won't help you after all. Uh, don't worry, Angela. Hey, uh, you look great. <sighs> Thanks, Dave. In, th in that case, uh, what do you want me to do? You'll be sorry! Uh, just lie down on this table, Angela. Right. We're gonna levitate you. <laughs> That's nothing, Angela. How's about a magic sneaker? <laughs> Uh-oh. And as you can see, there aren't any strings or wires connected at all to her. Dave, I don't know how long I can keep this up. I feel pretty funny about this. Well, Angela, you can't reveal a magic trick. But I feel like I'm living a lie. Can I please have my broom handle back now? <clears throat> oh, sure. <gasps> oh. Thank you. What are we going to do now, you guys? Can we just roll that clip? <laughs> Mommy, this followed me home. Can I keep it? <laughs> Hi, Angela Scoop Quickly here for Out of Control. If you're like most people, you're just managing to make financial ends meet. But the owner of this mansion obviously isn't like most people. In fact, he's not a person at all. It's Howard Hugh Dog, the world's richest dog. With me today is Howard's manservant, Jeeves, <laughs> who attends to Howard's every bark and call. So tell me, Jeeves, how did Howard come into all this money? Well, you are direct, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you. Well, Master Howard's master, an immensely wealthy lady, passed away some years ago. And in her will, she left an entire fortune to her pet. So this is the dog with doe, the Bowser with fox, the 14-carat canine. Master Howard is the world's richest animal, but he's not the first creature to ever come into money. You do recall Sterling Silver, the world's richest horse? Why, that animal thought nothing of running up huge bills in fancy hotels. And what happened to him? The room service bills finally caught up with him. Do you know what it costs to have a bucket of oats delivered to your room? Jeeves, how does 
Hunter would like to spend his money. You must remember, Scoop, this is a dog with a very high standard of I living. He only oh, drives oh, limousines. Howard, would you like to speak with him? Wait, I'll see if he's in. He's dripping all over my slacks. He eats only gourmet foods. He shops at the very best of stores. The what? The very best. Well, now, isn't he just a little bit spoiled? To say the least. He doesn't even chase cars anymore. He has them brought to him on a silver platter. Mm. Well, maybe I'll be lucky enough to get an exclusive interview with Howard Hugh Dog, the world's richest dog. Ha! Take your best shot. Excuse me, Mr. Hugh Dog, but with all this attention and all this money, I mean, how is life treating you? Rough. Well, there you have it, folks, straight from the canine's mouth. Even at the top, it's still a dog's life. This is Angela Scoop Quickly, for out of control. Hey, brother, can you spare a dime? Uh, get lost, you creep. Ladies and gentlemen, for our next feat, I have tied Dave up securely, and he will escape like Houdini. Who? You know, Houdini, the famous escape artist magician. Oh. I have secured him in these ropes, chains, and bonds. What kind of bonds? Bonds. James Bonds. <laughs> Very funny, presto. Well, anyway, I will take these keys and put them in my pocket so Dave will be unable to reach them. Fire! Fire? Fire! 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 Help! Somebody get me out of here! Fire! Fire! <laughs> hey, Dave, what are you doing all tied up? I'm waiting for a school bus, Hearn. What does it look like I'm doing? If you want to know the truth... <laughs> <laughs> I'm performing a magic feat, Hearn. No, not that kind of magic feat. You know, like uh, a magic trick, like Houdini. Who? You heard him, Deanie. No, Houdini. I don't know any Deanie, Dave. No, Houdini the magician. Did somebody Deanie the magician, Dave? Oh, Hearn, look, it looks like I'm just gonna have to escape from this myself, and while I try and do that, why don't you watch a special adult education feature for any of you adults in the audience. Adult education, where kids are the teachers and adults are there to learn. Good morning, class. Good morning, teacher. Today we're going to be studying about practical jokers. I need a volunteer. Oh, hey, hey. OK, you can come on up. Shake on it. Always be suspicious. Anyone can be a practical joker. I need another volunteer. Me, me, me. Would you like some prenup riddle? Yes, thank you, teacher. <laughs> Never let your guard down. Anything can be a practical joker. It's time for the test. Please stand. <laughs> Abracadabra. Oh. Alakazam. Oh. Sacagawea. Oh, heck, nothing seems to work. Well, Dave, if you wanted to get untied, why didn't you just ask me? I'll use the magic cloth here, and I'll say the magic word. Polyester. Voila! And the chains are gone. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! How did you do that? Where's the fire? Well, where's Dave? There's no fire. And Dave, well, <laughs> let's just say that I'll host the show while Dave's gone. <laughs> Dave, you're back. Did you disappear into the magical vortex? No, I ended up in the ladies' dressing room. <laughs> well, you can't say that I didn't try and help. Well, why don't you help out and do this next story, Hearn? Anything for you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I never get to do any good food stories. 
Well, today that's gonna change. Today it's Hearn Barbecue Burford. <laughs> Doing a Let's Eat Backyard Barbecue. You know, it's important to pick the right kind of grill. Nah, can't fit enough food on here. Yeah, <laughs> this is the baby making the fire. Very tricky. I use these little briquettes. Make sure that you use enough of them. Like my Uncle Bob used to say, too much is always better than not enough. <laughs> Perfect. Now the really important question, what to cook? This is what I call your balanced meal. Oh, this is gonna be wonderful. Oh, I love this stuff. Oh, God, what? get out of here. And now, a little spaghetti, some, uh, some peas, uh, let's see here. Some ice cream for dessert later. Okay, some of that in there. TV dinner for Cousin Murray. And uh, let's see, a few crackers. Put them in there. Okay, some of that. Uh, a little bit of ketchup. Some people like to cook exotic things on their grill, like big steaks or strange fish or even duck. Quack, quack. But me, I like hamburger. I've come up with the perfect way of making the perfect burger. <laughs> yeah, natural burger maker. <laughs> oh, it's perfect, look at that. Oh, it's right there. The Italian method. I call this one my burger stand. Uh, my grandmother taught me this one. It's always good to, to use some herbal seasoning. <laughs> Let's see if these babies are done yet. Nope. <laughs> a Hearn burger. Perfect every time. Now let's put some clothes on it. Uh, a little bit of mustard. Ah, uh, yeah. And some ketchup. Oh, I always like the way red goes with yellow. And some cheese. Mmm, I can't believe how good this looks. And just a little bit of chocolate sauce. Mmm, chocolate sauce. Some oysters. And the crowning touch, toothpaste. Mmm. Boy, does that look good. Mm, can't wait till I eat this. Now, that's what I call a burger. Nothing's gonna stop me from enjoying it now. <laughs> this is Hearn Burford for Out of Control. Back to you, Dave. Now, this is my idea of home cooking. <laughs> You know, Presto, I'm sorry to learn that all this magic stuff is just a bunch of hocus-pocus. Yeah, all this hand is quicker than the eye stuff isn't what I thought I was going to be learning once I became a magician. Yeah, it's too bad. Seems like there's no magic, no real magic left in the world. Well, how can you say that, Dave? Of course there's real magic left in the world. Oh, look, watch this! Da -da -da, oh, da -da. Right. Yeah. Excellent, Angela, but hello, watch this. See, two scarves, one yellow, one green. One red, one blue. That's great, Diz, but look at this. It baffles science. Oh, oh Waldo. Waldo, that's great. You're killing me. But watch this. This is real magic. I'm going to make this sandwich disappear. <laughs> hey, that's great, everybody. <laughs> that's great. You know, Presto, it just goes to show you, if we practice like that, we could perform magic, too. You know, it's been great having you on the show today. <laughs> Hey! Well, that's our show for today. Join us for our next show when we'll actually meet the flying carpet cleaner, and then we'll go to the bank to meet the automated fortune teller. See you next time. One for you. 
Pick a card. Any card. Okay, I'll pick you. Why does this always happen to me? 